You've tuned in to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Kelly Estes. Your access to success strategies and more to help you move onward and upward with your life. Listen in each week as she interviews others who have really taken their essence to the next level and truly unpause their life. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Estes. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is Dr. Kelly Estes and I am founder of the Addictions Academy. The Addictions Coach and Rehab Rescue. Welcome to Unpause Your Life. This is a great podcast where we showcase people who have done something extraordinary with their life. I welcome you and I hope you enjoy all of our guests. On my way found a reason to wake up another day. You are listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Callie Estes of the Addictions Coach and the Addictions Academy. My guest today, I'm very excited for my guest today, uh, is Michael Venn, and he is the creator of The Heroin Effect. But more importantly, he's a director, a writer, a producer, and content creator whose background in music led him into the film world. He made his writing and directorial debut in 2010 with the short film Dark Scribbles, which premiered in the short film corner at the 2010 Festival de Cannes and was an official selection at film festivals across the country. In 2012, Michael went on to produce and co-direct the award-winning feature documentary, In Danger of Being Discovered. In 2014, he wrote and directed a series of four music videos for the Grammy Ballot-nominated singer-songwriter Lizzie Morella. He was also nominated for a regional Emmy at the 39th Boston New England Emmy Awards for the PSA, It's Time, Let's Talk. In 2017, Michael won the New Hampshire Filmmaker of the Year Award at the New Hampshire Film Festival. Michael's current project is the feature documentary film, The Heroin Effect, which is now available on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play, and it was inspired by the opioid crisis that is currently plaguing the country. So welcome, Michael, and all your amazing accomplishments. Thank you so much, Kelly. I really appreciate you having me on. My God, I read your bio. I'm like, won this, won this, won this, won this. I'm like, geez, I haven't even won an award once in my life. That's oh, awesome. Oh, you will. You will. I don't know. I'm getting Oh, so well, thank you. I mean, no, you're not at all. I'm probably older than you. <laughs> so tell me how you got here. Tell me how you, why were you inspired to do the heroin effect? I know, obviously, uh, you're inspired for film, but what made you do this yeah. and how did you get here? Uh, you know, it was a really interesting um it was a really interesting story when I got the idea to do it. I, uh, I'm a single father. I have been since my son was, was around nine months old. He's just turned 14 the other day. And, uh, probably just almost four years ago, uh, he and I were, you know, I live in a downtown area and we walked downtown to grab a cup of coffee with the dog and, you know, kind of went for a walk one morning and, and, uh, it was in the fall. It was nice out and we walked back home and, uh, and I ran into a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in, in a few years. And, uh, you know, we were talking and I knew he had been in a bad car accident. And, uh, I said, Hey, you know, it looks like you're doing great. Heard about the accident. Nice to see you're all right. And he goes, yeah, do you know a whole story? And I was, I was like, no. And he goes, well, he goes, I'm a heroin addict. I, uh, shot up, nodded out, pulled my car. I'm lucky to be alive. And, uh, I've been in recovery now for 10, 11 months and, uh, living in a sober house. And that it might like literally it floored me that moment right there floored me because, this is a kid who grew up in a good home, had great parents, you know, well-educated athlete, you know, good looking guy. He was the guy that literally, if you saw him, you know, you wanted your daughter to date him or you wanted your son to grow up to be like him, you know, smart kid. He was in grad school at the time. And I remember thinking, you know, and kind of looking at my son and going, this isn't making any sense to me. Like, how are you a heroin addict? Like that doesn't fit the stereotype that, you know, kind of Hollywood sold us over the years. So you know, I, I talked to him for a while, you know, shook his hand, said, man, keep in touch. You know, I'm, I'm glad to hear you're doing really well. And uh, walked the rest of the way home and, uh, you know, walked in the door, grabbed a notebook and wrote three pages of an outline, which became the idea for the film. And the whole wow. thing started with me writing. Yeah. The, and the very first sentence that I wrote was like, I wanted to do a documentary film on heroin without shooting uh, uh, scenes with like people shooting up right. or doing heroin or scoring dope on a street corner and you know, it, it was like I didn't want to be that 
stereotypical needle porn kind of thing where it was just like, you know, find a junkie, follow them around, watch them score dope, watch them shoot up, watch them die. Like that story has been told and it's the wrong story. So for me, it was really like I needed to change perception. And as a musician, every band I ever listened to growing up was, you know, influenced by that, whether it was, you know, you know, Miles Davis and John Coltrane or whether it was the Sex Pistols or whether it was the Beatles or Sublime or Jane's Addiction or whatever it was. Um, you know, all those bands were affected by by heroin. And, um, you know, it, it was something that like it just I needed to do something about it right then and there. And I couldn't stop myself from not do it. So I, you know, pretty much said, all right, cool. Here's my next idea for a film. And, you know, went out, started filming a couple of weeks later and uh, spent three and a half years filming it. And at one point I thought I was done and, uh, and some, some storyline stuff changed and went back out and kept going. And so now I'm just happy that it's available on iTunes and, uh, and Google Play and Amazon and that kind of the rest of the world can see it. And I, and I hope I did a service that was to, to really help change the, the shame and the stigma and the way that addiction is looked at in this country because the opiate crisis is out there and, you know, we're losing a generation. And over the past year, I lost three friends, one of whom happened to be the kid who influenced, you know, gave me the idea to use the film and, um, to do the film. And then, uh, Two of the other ones, one of them was an attorney and the other one was a musician friend of mine. So it's uh, it, it, it affects everybody, I think, and especially here where I live. I've been in this 25 years, been doing this. This is all I do, addiction space. Mm-hmm. So I watched the film last night and that's the first thing I noticed was it's not, look how bad this is. It was stories of hope, stories of people that conquered it, which we don't have a whole lot of, which I think was a really nice take on it because – Every film we have, every documentary have, it's like, look how bad this is. But there's no solution. There's no hope. Right. And I watched the film. I'm like, wow, this is a really good take on, hey, you can recover. Hey, you can have a, a full life. These are things you can do. Right. I think you had one girl on yeah. there opening up a treatment center. It was like, wow, you know, these things that she's doing yeah. from, you know, years ago, she was a, a heroin addict. And now look how far she's come. I think it's just a different take. And I really like that spin on it. Have you gotten any pushback from the addiction community or have you gotten accolades? What are they, what kind of feedback are you getting? So far, the majority of the feedback that I've gotten has been, has been accolades. It's been really good. I think, you know, portraying it the way I did. I mean, like I said, you know, the best thing to do, especially during this crisis is focus on the solution, focus on, you know, the positive, try to offer the fact that there is hope and that people do recover and they can go on and do amazing things. You know, Eric Spofford, who's in the film, you know, you hear his story and he was like, you can find an heroin addict as bad as I was. You're not going to find anybody worse. And this is a guy who, you know, overdosed, overdosed five times, um, you know, came back and now he owns the largest treatment facility here in New Hampshire called Grand Recovery Centers. And, you know, he's doing amazing things and impactful things. And um, when I started doing the research for the film and his name kept coming up. So I reached out to him and was fortunate enough to film him very early on. And in when he started getting into the treatment industry from just the sober, sober living facility that he had done prior to that, you know, one of the other things that I got turned on to was Dr. Bruce Alexander's work via um, the book, chasing the scream, which uh, is about dislocation theory. And it's about, it was a book by Johan Hari that was on the New York, Times bestseller list, and he had done uh, a really famous TED talk about taking a look at everything that we know about addiction, and um, it really embraced Bruce Alexander's dislocation theory of addiction and, and the the Rat Park yeah experiment that he had done, and you know, and it was one of those things where it was like, you know, at this point, I was like, I was sick of hearing and seeing stories about oh, just another overdose and. Seeing um, what was at the HBO Cape Cod documentary, which I've actually never watched because I was doing a film on heroin and I didn't want to be influenced by it one way or another. You know, it was one of those things where I was like, I just I wanted to show something that I hadn't seen in in movies or television or anything like that. Where you know, I tried to like let's get out of this and let's do the let's focus on the people and let them tell their stories in their own words. Found a lot of people in recovery, and I mean, sadly, you know, the whole film isn't happy all the time you know there are, yeah. there's a lot of people in it that are struggling and there's um you know some people in it that don't make it and um uh, it's the reality of it if you are an active user and they're watching this film what is your takeaway for them 
what was your goal for somebody who's struggling, who can't seem to get out of the rat race? My my goal was that if you are an active user and you see the film, it gives you hope. At least it, it gives you hopefully a, a, an idea that there is hope that you can recover, that there is a way out, and you can see because there's somebody else, you know, out there that you see in this film that that shows you that there that that is possible. You know, I mean, I used to be a surfer. It seems like another life ago, but you know, Mavericks, a famous surf break in California, Mm -hmm. you know, that was a place that people looked at and they were like, oh my God, that's huge that, you know, nobody will ever surf it. And one guy finally did. And then he surfed it alone for 13 or 10 or 13 years before anybody else would ever paddle out and join him. You know, now it's a huge thing. They made a movie about it, about him and, and they have surf contests there and all that stuff. But it wasn't until somebody showed, yeah, you know what, this is possible that anybody else went and did it. So kind of using that surf analogy for this documentary film, um, you know, if you show somebody who's struggling with their addiction that there is hope, that people do recover and they go on to do amazing things and it impact other people's lives and, you know, help other people into recovery, then, I mean, it shows that anything's possible. And when I, a lot of people that I know that are in recovery, they all work, you know, kind of in that field, trying to help other people find recovery and out of their addiction. That's awesome. Now, do you have other projects in the works coming out, or what is your next thing? <laughs> my my next thing, it's kind of been a, a, a joke with this, because, you know, before when I thought this was done, I was like, okay, great, I'm going to go on, and I was like, I'm just going to do something totally different than what I've ever done. I'll do a horror film, just because that'll <laughs> be fun, and, and, you know, whatever. And uh, and then all of a sudden, some stuff changed with some of the characters, uh, or the people that are in the heroin effect, and I was like, okay, I have to go back out, and I have to film their families because you know somebody somebody passed away and and i wanted to make sure that that story that storyline came you know was 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 given a chance to to tell the whole story um or you know there was a woman who's in the film who you know i filmed her and she was great and then she like dropped off the face of the earth like i couldn't find her and and i didn't hear anything about her and you know i kind of wondered and then all of a sudden she popped back up and reached out to me and i was like okay and i went and filmed her in the treatment center that she was at and then i went and filmed her in prison that she was at I actually, I liked her piece the best, to be honest with you, because it was so real. Like that's, you know, what I deal with 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 clients is exactly that. Here they are, they're doing the right thing, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and bam, there's an old warrant, and they're in jail. And they're like, I'm doing the right thing, how did I get here? And it's not necessarily that you just decided to do the right thing, that everything is going to just all of a sudden be, you know, butterflies and cupcakes. You still have to clean up the other side of your street, and she talks about that. So I really actually enjoyed listening to her. Um, and of course, John Harry, you had him on there. He's so controversial. He's yeah. one of my favorites. He's, he, he's a great guy. I mean, I loved his book. I was fortunate enough. We had all these different opportunities. Like we were going to go film him in Boston and then, uh, he was really sick. So we couldn't film him there. He was like, listen, guys, don't show up. I'm actually stuck in a hotel room sick. Um, and then all of a sudden he was in New York and I'm like, great, man. I used to play in New York. It's a four hour drive. Let's go. And so hopped in the car, drove to New York City, had to rent, uh, conference room in the hotel that he was staying staying in filmed him in there um and then i turned it around and drove home but you know we spent four hours filming him in this conference room got some great stuff he's extremely uh empathetic and he's just a really knowledgeable guy and uh, he really embraces dr bruce alexander's uh dislocation theory in the rat park you know experiment yeah. and everything like that so it, it was a wonderful way to kind of highlight that stuff and uh and and really have like an expert who you know he wrote this great book and who is really knowledgeable about addiction and addiction you know, treatment and how we look at it as a, as a society. And, uh, so I was really fortunate to, to, uh, to have Johan, um, in the film. And, um, there was a couple other people that I really wanted to get in the film and couldn't or ended up cutting out because the story seemed more impactful without having celebrities in it. Right. Um, well, that's the other thing that I noticed. It wasn't, Russell Brand talking about this and Demi Lovato talking about that. It was real people. And when you yeah. watch some of these shows and some of these, you know, documentaries, it's like the Chris Heron project, which is awesome, but it's a famous yeah. person and it's hard to relate. You know, if you're a middle class or lower class, you're going, okay, well, that's great. So he has tons of money, he has tons of drugs and he cleaned up, you know, yay. He has stuff I don't have. He has resources I don't have, but here you're filming the average person who has the same resources the rest of the world has and they have these mm-hmm. amazing stories to tell. So I think this, the, the film is very powerful. 
Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And it's funny that you mentioned uh, Russell Brand and, and Chris Heron, because at one point I did have clips of Russell Brand in the film talking with Johan because they're friends or Russell Brand with Oprah Winfrey. And at one point, uh, you know, a friend of mine, an LA, LA filmmaker friend of mine was just like, listen, dude, you, you need to take that out of the film because it takes you out of the story. You're telling these people's stories. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, my God, look, it's Oprah. Oh, my God, it's Russell. And it takes you out of it where, you know, you really need to be engrossed in these characters and these lives that you're just being introduced to. And I totally agreed with it. And I was like, thank you for the honest feedback. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I mean, Chris, Chris Heron is an amazing story. Um, you know, I mean, he's played for the Boston Celtics. And uh, there's a great documentary about him called mm-hmm. Unguarded that ESPN yeah. 30 for 30 did. And uh, in his story, I know for a fact, in in the film, Sandy, who's in the film, the one who opened up the the, the uh, treatment uh, center that's kind of highlighted throughout the the film, she went to a, a high school gymnasium where he gave the whole the whole talk uh, about his story, and she burst out into tears. And that was the moment where she was like, "I don't want to be anonymous about my recovery anymore. Like, I want to tell the world, and I want to get involved in this." And so, you know, I, I was in the process of reaching out to him, and again, didn't want to have him in the film because this was about these people that uh, weren't famous, they, they, you know, and I think that helps, you know, anybody who's suffering with, uh, with addiction or struggling and they need to find recovery. I think it's, it is like you said, really helpful when you're like everyday people, not celebrities. Yeah. And I, I think that's what makes the film stand out because there's all these other films. It's always has one endorsement celebrity. It's like, Oh yeah, I endorse this film or I'm in this film or it's my story. But the reality is we don't have, you know, a lot of common stories that are that are told in such right. a great way that it's hope, 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 hope. This is what you can accomplish. This is what you can do. I mean, the gentleman in his front yard talking about how many times he shot up and now he's got a treatment center. And it's like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. and he's got kids running around. He's like, these are my kids. This is my house. These are things I've built. So somebody in active addiction going, I'm never going to get there. It makes them feel like it's possible. So I think that's awesome. Now, how can our listeners find the film? How can they download it? How can they access it? Uh, the easiest way right now is we have distribution online via iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Um, so you can get it, you know, in all three of those locations online. And, um, you know, and if you forget those or whatever, you can check out the heroineffect.com. It's got links to, to all the places where you can download it and watch the film. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, we'll get it picked up uh, on a wider Scale and who knows? I mean, I've been talking to somebody about doing some theatrical things uh, in Austin, Chicago, San Francisco, L.A. So just getting it out there and partnering with some various organizations out there. I mean, that won't be until next year. But just, you know, for me as a filmmaker, it's really just getting people to watch your film and, uh, and, and hopefully having a positive impact and helping to change perception. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I made the film for people that you know, aren't struggling with addiction, but don't understand it. And so, you know, there's those people that always comment that, you, you know, you know, oh, it's just another overdose and, you know, let them die. And it's that that's their choice. As a filmmaker, you want to kind of touch those people, too, and have them go, oh, wait a minute, man. Maybe this isn't the choice that you think it is. You you kind of have no choice when you're an addict. And, and for this whole thing to change and for us to look at it differently and as a society make you know, strides in the right direction where we can really impact, you know, recovery and, and kind of ending this current opiate epidemic. Um, I think it's going to take those people's minds being changed that are kind of those naysayers and have them look at this a little bit differently because it's, when they see that it's their neighbor, their kindergarten teacher, their friend, their family member, their loved one, you know, I think all of a sudden then it puts it into a new perspective and then we're kind of able as a society to make changes that we need to make. Right. That's awesome. So we're going to put all those links up that I have that you sent me for everybody so that they can reach the film. They can reach you and see everything and see what you're working on. And I think that's amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you um, getting in touch with me and and allowing me to do this with you because I think, uh, you know, again, it's just uh, it's going to help get it out there. And I really appreciate that. I actually have one question for you, but what did you think of the, uh, Daniel in the film who kind of kept his heroin diary on his cell phone and spoke directly to. Yeah, that I don't want to say triggered me, but that reminded me of my husband because I wrote a book called I Married a Junkie. My husband was 
fairly clean when we met, but it wasn't for heroin. It was coke. And he got hooked on heroin. And I was watching that. And I'm like, oh, my God, this reminds me of my husband's addiction. So it was triggering for me in that sense that it was like, wow. But at the same time, it was like sobering in a sense of like, we don't want to go back to that direction. So it's kind of neat. It was neat yeah. the way you put you had that through out there. And at the same time, the sides of hope of this is what you can achieve versus what you are. Thank you. I it was it was one of those things that uh, it was there was a lot a lot more footage of him that's not in the film, but it was uh, I was very fortunate to have access to that footage to incorporate into it and allow him to tell his story as somebody who was in the midst of his addiction and he was struggling. And you got to see, I mean, he was a bank manager, so you know you got to see his his story and and how he was affected with his addiction and, and see him in his daily life. Yeah, that's so. pretty powerful. It's that. Uh, Having him in that film for families, I think, is powerful because families that when they're in their own world and they have a family member in addiction, they're so close to the situation. They don't notice things. But when you look at somebody else's addiction, you're like, wow, this is what's happening. This is really what's happening. And this is the direction we're going to go. So it's I think it's like a sobering effect for other people to see outside of themselves what's actually happening. Yeah, for sure. And. Like I said, I'm I'm very fortunate to have that footage in the film. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, I want to thank you for coming on. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on and join us and talk about the film. And like I said, we're going to have everything up so everybody can reach you. And if you wouldn't mind giving us your social media handles, if anybody has any questions or wants to reach you directly, how can they find you? Uh, let's see. My Twitter handle, I think, is just my name, although I never look at that. So I should allow you to put that up for me because I'm pretty sure it's at Michael Venn, but it might be my middle initial too. So it might be at Michael S. Venn. Boy, that's one of those things that you never pay attention to. But, um, you know, through the heroin effect, you can find uh, links to everything for me. And um, yeah, boy, it, I should have been more prepared. It's okay. One. It's at <laughs> Michael S. Venn. You're fine. We'll, we'll put it all up for them. So um, awesome. they can just click on it and go right and see it. Yeah. And the film is, you know, uh, the heroin effect and it's on, uh, Twitter and Facebook and, um, but the heroin effect.com. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity and, uh, I love the work that you're doing and, uh, I do need to read your book that you wrote about your husband. Cause you know, as a guy who played in bands for a long time and was a musician and a drummer and, uh, you know, you definitely, you definitely see that running rampant in that industry. Yeah. Stay on afterwards and I will get your address and I'll send you a copy. Ooh, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you are listening to Unpause Your Life with Dr. Callie Estes and my guest, Michael Venn, which Twitter is Michael S. Venn. So if you have any questions, um, the movie is called The Heroin Effect. If you want to reach out and check it out. Thanks for coming on, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for listening. I really hope you enjoyed the show today. Head on over to iTunes and Apple Podcasts and leave a comment or review of what you think. Or contact us at 1-800-706-0318. If you want to be on our show, feel free to email or call. And if you have a topic, feel free to email or call as well. Thanks for listening to Unpause Your Life. For show notes and more, head on over to unpauseyourlife.com. Big shout out to recoveryinnovators.com for help producing this show. Thank you, guys. I took a walk down the long road Where they said that I shouldn't go On my way found a reason to wake up another day But they needed to show you All the things that you won't do Find faith or religion But nothing to show for it
walk down the dark road Where they said that I shouldn't go I knew the dangers of flying Now I'm so far from silent ground But they need 